got to open tomorrow. Ah, uh, bye, Mark. And we bye, are live. Bye, bye, guys. And <laughs> <laughs> that was Mark, and uh, welcome to What's Your Grails. I'm Tony Sanders, and tonight my guest is none other than Cat Ren Figures. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And Mark just left because uh, he has to work in the morning. He said, "Yeah, he's got a he's got to open tomorrow, so ah. just stopping in to say hi." <laughs> and showing me that cool ice cream though—I had never seen that before, and that was pretty cool. I like that. that was yeah, he cool. basically lives off of the the different DC ice creams from Edie's right now. <laughs> so, hey, you know, always have to keep him stocked. Nothing wrong <laughs> with that. Nothing's wrong with that. So, on uh, what's your grills? I always ask the question, like, what's your holy grail? And it differs from different people. So, I'm going to ask you, Cat Ren Figures, what is your holy grail? So, I know a lot of people are going to talk about things like the first appearance of uh, Wolverine or the first appearance of Spider Man or even like the Trinity. Uh, I'm a little different. Um, I, I have an affection towards a lot of sidekicks and a lot of like just little offshoot characters. I would say my holy grails would probably be like the first appearance of uh, Dick Grayson Robin. Oh, and cool. uh, probably the first appearance of Ace the Bat Hound would probably be like the two that I'd probably lose it over the most That's personally. Cool. That is cool because that's what that, that's what this is about because it's, it's different for everybody. So that is cool, like to see the first Robin or even like uh, the Ace Hound. I like that. That's cool. See, yeah. like, see, like mine, mine is like like mine's different. You know, mine's uh, you know, Captain Marvel, uh, Captain America, and like like right now I'm on a I'm on an Iron Man kick, so I've been. <laughs> I've been uh end game has done me in, so uh, I enjoyed that movie pretty pretty well. Uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah, we did. We had a lot of fun throughout. Uh, definitely, definitely something that I, I I enjoyed it as an ending for a lot of characters. I felt like it was fitting, to be honest. Mm. Where a, a lot of a lot of films anymore. You're like, oh, okay, that was rushed, or oh, that wasn't very. I, I felt like it was very fitting, and I felt like a lot of characters, they earned it. Yeah. I, I, I laughed, I cried, I loved it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. My only complaint, and everybody knows my only complaint, was that uh, Bucky didn't get the shield, but there's still mm -hmm. talk of a, like a T, what is it, TV show they're talking about, like a, on the streaming service they're going to do. Yeah, um, something on the the DC service or Marvel service. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Sorry. That's all right. But yeah, uh, they're talking about what's it? Uh, I guess Sam Wilson as a Captain America and Winter Soldier Bucky. So we'll see. But who knows? But like, I I I want to see uh, Bucky as Cap. I I like that idea, and I like Sam Wilson as Cap. So that's gonna be cool to see and. Uh, Phase if they go into what, phase four or five. What, what are we on phase five now? What is it? I can't even remember anymore. I think, I think we're either at the very tail end of four. Like there might be one or two things left over, or maybe we're gonna start in on five. Because I think, technically, wouldn't Spider-Man's resolution still be continued into four, or would that jump us into five? I With his next film. Throwing, well, I mean, because it's throwing out the multiverse thing, and then it's still in the, uh, and then I had the theory on the time travel thing where, like, because, like, Thanos left that point in time that there was no more Thanos, you know, no threat to the Earth or whatever, no, you know, no real threat to the Avengers. So there's a place where, like, none of that happened, the Infinity uh, War and all that stuff didn't happen, so. Uh, and then, like, uh, so the multiverse thing, it's, and that throws that into that. So it's kind of like the same kind of soup. So I think, yeah, it's going to step into something different. Um, I'm seeing in the chat that they're saying that it's still phase three and that 
four starts after Spider-Man. Okay, cool, cool. cool. I, I could, I lose track. It's like is it four or five. I don't know. I just, I just know I don't want them to stop. That's all. I, I don't want them to stop. So just keep it going. So I know you're a big uh, advocate of good story, Cameron. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I, uh, I do like how it's. <laughs> And uh, I, I have a few story grails, as I like to call them, uh, story grails that I like to show uh, and get your opinion on them. Because uh, these are some stories that like I enjoyed growing up. And what's that one? Oh, here it is. Now, let me see if this is I have to put them in order because I didn't. I wasn't prepared today. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, it's it's six issues long, but it's it's one of my favorite stories, and uh, it's actually like the the my the hunt mascot basically on the, the hunt show. Uh, but it's uh, Craven's last hunt, and this is a uh, there's like issue one. Okay. Two, that's kind of an iconic cover. Everybody knows that one. And I uh, see what it would say a newsstand. <laughs> There's the third part to the story. And then uh, another iconic cover right there. There's the fourth part. Okay. Part. And it's basically like a. He basically almost kills Spider-Man, basically, and he's and he's like uh, dying, basically. So. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty good story. Have you ever read it? Uh no, I, I haven't. To be completely Cat honest. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, in your defense, in your defense, you like DC though. In your defense, in your defense. <laughs> but if you ever read a Marvel story, get uh, Craven's Last Hunt. It's a pretty good. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's on my list of things that I know I need to watch. It, I, I know I need to read it. Sorry. Getting thrown up a little bit. But uh, it, it, it hasn't happened yet. Um, I do read some Marvel uh, current storylines. I'm kind of meh on with Marvel. But I, I do I do like Marvel. I, I, get, a lot of, I get a lot of flack for not showing Marvel a lot of love, but I do love a lot of old school Marvel and I love a lot of old school Marvel characters, you know? You know what's funny is that when uh, I was at C2E2, I did see you, but I didn't know it was you at the time, but I seen uh, Starfire. I seen Starfire <laughs> like, zooming across the, the, the wall. I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool, Starfire. You, know, you were just like going across, going somewhere, but I don't know where you're going. But uh, I didn't know it was you at the time until like uh, I seen the pictures <laughs> on Instagram that that was you doing the cosplay, and I was like, oh, okay, that was Catherine. But like we didn't, we didn't see each other over the weekend or whatever because she was sick, and like I was, was so uh, sick, hammered in Chinatown. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's another story, and uh, this is another grill that uh, I got. I love the story. I love the movie, and uh, I'll show this book till the end of time. And like, uh, I got to get the other ones, but this is the first one, and this is like the most crucial one to get. And you have to get a first print if you can get one. And this is uh, the Crow number one. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's like a, that's 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 Mark's baby. That's like one of my favorite stories. One of my favorite uh, books, and. Uh, this is like, that's what makes it cool. Those back on the back that he drew the crow on the back. Those are cool. This is a keeper. So this is a, this is something the kids get. But I, I too, see, like I have a Superman back there. That's Superman. I collect DC. See, I collect DC and Marvel. I have no like uh, bias. Really, I, I'm not biased towards any. Except for the movies. <laughs> Except for the movies, I'm not biased towards the books or the characters. Uh, yes, R.I.P. Brandon Lee. Uh, 
Hey, Timothy, the Canadian comic hunter, uh, good good bro of mine. That dude, he has a collection on his hand, and I am going to get that man on this show or on the hunt. I'm scared to bring him on the hunt because he might actually dethrone one of us. <laughs> so, uh, another good story that I recommend for you, and I show this a lot, but this is the book that's uh, that uh, everybody's got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep showing it till everybody has one in their collection. Uh, John's comics with kid recently picked one up because of me. He said he had to get one. What is it? Uh, this is X Men. Uh, God loves man kills, and uh, this is like the story of the purifiers. Where like uh, you know how the X Men are hated or whatever because they're mutants. Yeah. Well, this is the story where like uh, they actually like are like you know mutants are hunted down, killed, and uh, murdered because they're just mutants. And it's a pretty crazy story like uh i'll show the i'll show the uh first couple pages of it to you because it's a cool story but this will get you let's see it so it starts open like this is like how graphic it is really because it starts open with uh these kids right here and they're like running and he gets shot and so it's the purifiers, and the purifiers are the ones that believe that, you know, mutants don't have a right to exist, that they should die, regardless if they're evil or good, they don't exist on they shouldn't exist. And so uh, right here, this is where the uh, the little boy's powering up, and they just kill the little boy, and the girl's like, why? And they shoot her. And then, you know, they don't just, you know, they just don't kill them. They string them up. And put you know mutant on him, and Magneto finds him, Aww. and he pulls him that's down, sad. and like that's just the beginning. This is Claremont. That's Chris Claremont. Sad. This is Chris Claremont at his best. So this, that's the that's a preview of it. So that's something you need to get into. God okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have to check that out. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a grail book story, like a grail story for me. I like the story. It's a one I recommend that you check out or anybody to check out they should make uh, um, it's one of Claremont's best stories and they should actually make it into like an X-Men movie so but that is another story that I'd recommend that you would check out now I do have like the only one that I have that is a I only have two, I think maybe three books with Starfire. <laughs> so, <laughs> you so. need more. Star's my girl. She gets an entire like section behind me on that wall. Just her. I know. And it's like, I seen, a, I was at my buddy shop today and. Uh, Dude, I got, I got so many different single issues and single stories I could turn you on to that will make you a hardcore Starfire fan. Like I have one issue in here next to me. If I show you that, you read that, you're gonna be a Starfire fan by the end of it. See, I have to check that out. Cause yep. that, that that uh, I was I was at my buddy's shop and there was a, a, a I forgot what book it was, but it was like Zatanna, Starfire, and somebody else on the cover. And like I was like, oh, that's a cool book. And I was like, America. Uh, I forget what the issue number is. I know what you're talking about. Like, they're all like, they're, yeah, all three really like strong characters in it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like looking at that, and I was like, I thought about you because I seen Starfire on there, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's a cool. And I thought about getting it for the hunt, and I was like, that's a cool book. And I was thinking about because I was like, can't really figure it loves Starfire. I think it's a one in ten or a one in fifteen. That cover. You're gonna make it's me go back and get it. After. If really? you can get it deal i would suggest getting it you're gonna make me that go cover? back to my buddy shop and go get it because i just seen it today if, like, you, seriously. if you can get it for a decent price i would suggest snatching it to be honest so i'll be I, there too. yeah I'll be I, i'd say do it because that cover's amazing and i mean all three awesome characters but uh so 
the 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 issue that I was talking about that uh -huh. would make you a Starfire fan. Don't make fun of me. It's the new Fifty Two. But uh, so this is DC Universe presents Starfire. It's issue eighteen, and I'm gonna take it out of the poly bag to show you how amazing the this story is. Man. Um, I will tell you in a second. All right. So, according to this. Artist is uh, Frederico Dolicio. Dolicio. I don't know, but um, basically, in this, we're dealing with Starfire just having to be a badass, having to once again save the day. Which so many of her stories in the New Fifty Two is retelling her origin of being a princess who is enslaved, who has to fight. Now, didn't the for... sister do it to her? Isn't it the sister? Uh, it's, yeah, Blackfire sells her into slavery, which the New 52, I feel like they, uh, they justify it a little more because in the New 52, it's uh, Commander, which Commander, that's Blackfire's real name, and then Coriander, which is Starfire's real name. Uh, Kami has to sacrifice her younger sister, who is Starfire. I'm going to go with Blackfire and Starfire because that's the names everyone knows. Blackfire yeah. has to hand over her younger sister to these evil, oppressive lords who are taking over Tamaran because their parents have just been butchered in front of them and their entire world is going to be butchered if they don't have someone as a prisoner, as a token. And what's more powerful than someone of royal blood? So Blackfire is left on the throne kind of as a puppet ruler because she was first in line, but she didn't really have power at that time. And it was either every single man in your on your planet is going to be slaughtered or you're gonna hand over your younger sister. Wow. So, okay. I mean, it, yeah. it tears your heart out. I mean, and I know so many people that just bash the new 52 run of Red Hood and the Outlaws, but that touches on it so many times. And you see the sister relationship there develop so much better, which I love the George Perez Marv Wolfman run of the new Teen Titans and Starfire there, which that's where she was introduced. Right. But Blackfire, yes, yes. <laughs> but Blackfire is much more just spiteful and evil in that run. She was more like, I'm going to be passed up for my younger sister who's more powerful than I am. I'm going to team up with these evil lords and they're going to take her away. That's more, more in line of what happened there versus what happened in the new 52 hours like she had no choice in the 1980s it was i don't want to be passed over for my younger sister wow <laughs> it was more of a power trip versus saving her people so the new 52 uh the sister bond is much better in that to be honest but uh you know blackfire very complicated character in her own right and uh, a lot of respect for her as a villain a lot of respect for her as a villain. Yeah, I've never like known that part of her because like I always heard like you know she just like was mean all the time. So like to hear that part is intriguing now. <laughs> but uh, here is a uh, first appearance of Blackfire, signed by both Marv Wolfman and George Perez. And as you can see, she's literally torturing Starfire on the front cover. That's her whole thing in the 1980s is just like. She wants to torment her sister because she's jealous of her. <laughs> and so now it's not that same way that was in the New 52. Nah, New 52, there's there's more of a reason there. Well, that's good. At least it's, it's uh, more understandable than before. Because, like, yeah, I remember Blackfire just being mean. That's all I remember being was mean. Oh, she is mean. She is mean. <laughs> but she's less evil. <laughs> See, I actually took this to Chicago. <laughs> I took this to Chicago. And I was going to get it signed by Perez, but, like, I never got around to it. But, like, 
it's signed by Wolfman, but never got to sign my Perez, but I am glad to have it, though, because I was just like, this is one of these ones where he's, I guess you should have it, and it's like, uh, Starfire is on the cover, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, I got this signed at uh, Indiana Comic Con years ago, and it's signed by both. See, so you got the, she's got the better one. <laughs> well, it it's not slabbed or anything, but let's it face it, this, this is my baby. It's not going anywhere. It's I got to meet both of them. Uh, I also got sketches from George at the time. So you know, this is back when he was still doing sketches and everything. So. Definitely, definitely something that's not leaving my collection. So I'm okay with it not being slabbed. That is cool. like it, everything doesn't need to be slabbed. Like all right, no. like I said, like this book right here, this will never be slabbed because I like to read the story. Uh, like slabbing a book slabbed looks gorgeous on a wall. That's oh, that's yeah. my thing. But not every book has to be slabbed. Yeah, see, it looks beautiful, yeah. but not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> And see, like, this is one, this is another book that I have that uh, has Starfire. She's on the cover, and uh, this is the first appearance of Protector. <laughs> yeah. This is the uh, drug awareness one or whatever. This is the, and there's the uh, Protector. This guy replaced Robin. He was in charge because they didn't want to, something about they didn't want to pay for Robin or something like that. They didn't want, so they were being cheap. They didn't want to pay for Robin, so they, this guy filled in. And this was his first appearance. And then, like, there's Starfire right back there. See, See I love I love the poofy hair on yeah. Starfire yeah, in the 90s. Daughter. I love that hair. Yeah, and then, like, it would just, like, shoot back whenever she would fly and stuff. So it was always cool. I liked it, you know? And, like, so, all right. So so I watched the, uh, the Titans, the TV show. And uh, mm -hmm. I liked it. I, I mean, like, everything aside from, like, you know, besides some of the designs of the characters. The storytelling was good. The action was on point and I enjoyed it, you know, but like, yeah, so, like I said, some of the character designs weren't up to my par, but you know, besides all that, if you get past that story, it's good. So, uh, what do you think about it? So as far as the Titans live action series went, um, when we first got like the stills of it, I wasn't happy, but I bit my tongue because I'm a Titans girl. Everyone knows I'm a Titans girl. Starfire is literally like my favorite comic book character of all time. So I bit my tongue. I'm like, you know, I'm going to wait for the series to come out. I'm going to wait for the conclusion. And I'll tell you, like you, I appreciated it for what it was. Uh, several of the characters, clearly they put a lot more money into their costuming, their designing, into the creation of that character. And others, it they just kind of felt like they got what was left. And yeah. that really disappointed me. The fact that they put so much money into Hawk and Dove suits, which they looked amazing. Hawk, Dove, and Robin all look fantastic in oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get to the, like, you know, the Titans that, Everyone knows. Say, say, everybody, is, say everybody knows on your mind. Garfield. Say Garfield. Garfield Logan. Oh, that manic panic hair. That manic panic hair. He <laughs> he definitely looked. He and Raven definitely looked like they went to Hot Topic, bought some manic panic, did their hair. Maybe they had a little bit of money left over with their hot cash and they, they bought some new clothes and they're like, okay, we're good. We're, we're ready to jump on into the season. You know, um, Starfire, I wish that they hadn't had her have amnesia for the entire series. I wish they had started on out with, hey, I am an alien freaking princess. I am a badass beast yeah. warrior princess. I'm a survivor. I am here to save the day or even if she's fleeing someone and she's trying to hide out there for a while i'm fine with that too i wish that she hadn't been so lost in the beginning i wish she had just been like look i can kill people like this and so much of like her early things it was like hey star you really shouldn't do that because you're going to seriously injure people 
And you even have like old covers, like the original uh, appearance, the first appearance of Captain Carrot. It's uh, a cover of Starfire. And she's like, she's like, I'm going to kill this man. He murdered the only man I ever loved. And it's like, Starfire, you can't kill again. <laughs> you know, like those, those crazy covers. But, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I know they're putting a lot more into, uh, you know, later seasons if they do them. Um, and I did, I did enjoy where the characters ended up. Uh, I picked this up because I liked it. Sorry, it's mylar, so it's a, it's a little shiny. Oh, that's fine. It's beautiful. But it's the it's the Robin photo cover that came out. So, what is this? Is this uh, New York Comic Con? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the one. This came out. But it's just a, it's a reprint of New Teen Titans issue one, which pretty awesome in its own right. Oh, I liked when they showed uh, <laughs> Jason Todd, when they showed him on there. I was like, oh, <laughs> when they brought Jason Todd out, I was like, oh, that is hilarious. I was just like, wow. He was a great Robin in that. The, yeah. the actor they had cast for that was spectacular. And he's like, hey, so I'm the new Robin. And it's like Dick Grayson's like, there's a new Robin? <laughs> <laughs> that look he just gave him, like, what? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I got the new stuff. This and that. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, he's just showing him up. He's like, I got the new stuff. I got and the new Both have cases. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> it, it was great. It was just like one of those good shows. Um, have you been watching? Uh, I was going to say, uh, now I am a fan of. The CW Flash, and okay. and I have been buying Flash like none other. <laughs> like so, um, like recently, uh, I bought the first appearance of Captain Boomerang. Oh wow! And uh, that's Carmine Infantino, and that's uh, yeah, that's beautiful. And I. And I'm just like the show, like I love the show. Me and my son watch it like like nonstop. Um and more than like and I enjoyed the character in the Justice League movie, like uh because he was like the highlight to me, like when they did the Justice League movie and they were uh, and Superman kind of like had eye contact and he was just like, you know, like you know, you can see me, like what? And uh so that was like the highlight of that movie for me. So like uh I bought that one, and then like that's one of my grails. And then um, I actually tried to like I'm gonna get uh, the reverse flash. I mean, that's like the one I'm looking at right now. But uh, I was looking at a the first appearance of uh, Captain Cold. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be a while. <laughs> it'll be a while. <laughs> but yeah, but it's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Checking on Common Core. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come up. Yeah, it'll come up. Just work your way up to it. But this is a a cool classic cover that, like, as a kid, I remember looking at, and then like to finally get a hold of one, I was like happy to get one. And this is oh, you know, wow. it's the one. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's the the Flash of Two Worlds, right? Yeah, yeah, Flash of Two Worlds. Yeah, where they first mention uh, it's the first Golden Age parents of the Silver Age. Oh, the first Golden Age, well, Silver Age appearance of the Golden Age Flash, and the origin of both of them, uh, the first mention of Earth 2, and also uh, first Silver Age Shade, and Thinker and Fiddler. Oh, so the Thinker, the Thinker is actually like one of the uh, the villains that was in like season four, the villain from season four, the Thinker, which was kind of cool. So. But yeah, so I've been buying flash stuff so i want to get flash uh 105 his first issue so that's on my list too so trying trying to get these going like my list is right it's ds explained it he's like it, it's eccentric because like i have no real plan it just it pops up like stuff just pops up and i just go out and try to get it <laughs> but those those are like two of the grills that i enjoy having that are like dc grills and like like i love dc stuff man like i love dc stuff i love marvel stuff um 
I love sci-fi stuff. I love uh, fantasy stuff. Like, you know, I love anime. I love, you know, all, I think as a collector, we should love everything. I think I, I all around do, except for mm-hmm. K-pop. <laughs> except, <laughs> <laughs> no K-pop, sorry. <laughs> Like, I, I feel like so many people just kind of get lost in the, oh, this is hot, or this is this character. And it's like, you know what? I I see so much of myself in, like, the Titans, and I, I have an emotional attachment towards this or that, or, like, I've read this story, and it just, something about it resonated with me, or something about it just just stuck and I could not get it out of my mind. And those are the kinds of things that I look for. And I'm like, oh, there's a variant of this book that I loved so much. You know, this might be something that I'd hunt for. Oh, yeah. I want hunting, you know, like uh, I think, I think one book that really doesn't get enough love and it's just an amazing cover. I don't really think it's much of anything. So it's, Teen Titans issue four, and it's Speedy shooting at those uh, at that those hoops cool. that the Titans are on, and he's blindfolded. So it's like, hurry up, Wonder Girl, bust us loose before Speedy's next trick trick shot sizzles us. You know, and it's like you asked for him. Here's Speedy with the Titans. I've never seen that. You go, I look for that. Dude, wrong. dude I, wrong. I love this. I love this. I read through it as soon as I got my hands on it. I don't ever see anyone talking about this, and I love this issue so much. This is literally like the first time I've ever seen that cover. And like now I this, kind of really want to go. This is amazing. Through. This is amazing. If you've never seen it, check it out. I don't think they're very expensive, like at all, to be completely honest. But so it's Teen Titans issue four. And uh, Lime Mom, you want to know what year the Flashes was? Uh, this is Flash 123. This is from 1961. This one right here, The Flash of Two Worlds or whatever. This one is 1961. Carmine Infantino artwork. And the other one is Flash 117 from 1960. So that's... Like... Yeah, I've when, when you're talking about Titans, you really can't escape this book. So this is The Brave and the Bold, issue 54. Oh. So, yeah, it's in Mylar. Sorry, it's it's going to be a little shiny. But uh, it deserves the Mylar. This is my baby. And uh, so shout out to the great legend. Uh, I bought this at an auction from his live show, like, forever ago when I was first really getting into the community and I was super excited. It was like the first time I'd ever even had a chance to like buy this. And yeah, it's the first appearance of like Mr. Twister. If you've ever read a uh, Titans hunt that came out like right before rebirth and led into rebirth, mm-hmm. then you'll know who Mr. Twister is. And it's the first time that we had Robin kid flash and Aqualad all teaming up. And it's not technically like the first appearance of the Teen Titans, the way like that uh, Detective Comics isn't technically deemed the first appearance of the uh, Gotham City Sirens, but this is, it, it is. It's it's the first time we get the guys together. Um, it's a few issues later on, we get uh, Wonder Girl showing up, you know, and that's considered the first Teen Titans, but let's, Let's face it, those trio, the trio, they started yeah. out in Teen Titans. They started out in Young Justice. These three saving the day for Mr. Twister. Yeah, that that is another book that is on my list to get to. Like that is like uh yeah, because like I have because like I have a weird hobby of collecting stuff and it's like just like I cl- that's like on my list. That is but hey, you know, uh like right now I'm I'm upset because like Last uh, last year, I was ordering a certain storyline, and I had all. I am missing one part of the story, and you might know the story. Uh, okay. Judas contract. Yes. The Judas yes. contract. Yes. That is a grail story. If nobody has read the Judas contract, 
You do not that, know a good that is story. George Perez, Marv Wolfman at their best. Uh, Tara and Treachery and Jericho, and we get Nightwing out of it. Yes. So uh, this, uh, I think, I was, I was thankful enough to be able to get this at the same con um, years ago that I was getting all the signatures from George Perez and Marv Wolfman. You know, it's a couple years before his retirement and everything, but it's signed by both. This is my baby. You know, Nightwing. It's Nightwing with the collar, which I love the collar. We need I'm, more of like, the collar. I enjoyed that Nightwing costume actually when it first came out. Like I, I did. I actually dug it. Like the high collars, the the yellow. Like, I I know so many people that like make fun of Nightwing because they're like, oh, is it the guy with the poofy collar? I'm like, you know what? His poofy collar is awesome. Okay, but. I, I love this book so much. He kicked a lot of ass with that poofy collar on. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. He he yeah. slapped uh, he slapped Deathstroke sideways. So congratulations. <laughs> Not many people can do that and live. So congratulations, Dick Grayson. Exactly. And what was his deal like? They started calling him Rick. What the hell is that? Uh, we, uh, I, I like, I like to think that that didn't happen. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, I, I was like, my it's, son, my son had brought that to my attention one day and I was like, no son, his name is, is Dick, Dick Grayson. It's always been Dick. And it's it's like, amnesia, <laughs> alcohol, and bad decisions. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to put it. Exactly. Cause my, I was like, when he told me that, I was like. I was like, no, son, it's Dick Grayson. It's always been Dick Grayson. He's like, no, dad, it's Rick. I was like, son. I was like, you know, I Googled, and then, like, Google said something different. I was like, Google's not working. You know, what's wrong with Google? Google saying <laughs> Richard Grayson? Yeah, I was like, it's, it's wrong. What's, what's going on? This is something wrong. So, yeah, like, no. <laughs> oh, God, that, that reminds me. There was a meme that came out years ago. And it was an image of Starfire and Robin. And of course, you know, this is Dick Grayson, Robin. And she asks him, she's like, your name is Richard Grayson. Okay. And he's like, what about it? Like, how do you get Dick from Richard? And he just looks at her and smiles and says, you ask nicely. <laughs> 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 that's that's totally that's totally a Dick Grayson response to that. Uh, only hero girls can you get a cat ring for your joke. <laughs> that's, that's what's one hundred percent like his humor, and I love that. That is good though. That is a good story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you couldn't find the oh have you like so I've been re, like I reread the well like they're redoing the, the flash. Like year one and uh, issue seventy and like, yeah, I couldn't find a seventy one either. Uh, but seventy is like the the retelling of the origin, and then like seventy one is like the continuation. Like they're just redoing like year one, like they did Batman. And uh, yeah, seventy one, man, it's like like, I guess people like just went out and got it everywhere because I couldn't find it, and I was like upset because I was enjoying the story. So now I'm gonna have to go on a hunt Saturday and, and get in trouble with the wife. Because <laughs> she was, I, I told a hilarious story about her today, but I better not talk anymore because she, the show might get canceled early. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I took my Teen Titans, uh, the first appearance of Nightwing, I took that up to uh, like I took a like when I went to Chicago, I took a lot of stuff with me, and it was like that's the first time I ever traveled with anything. And like when you travel with stuff, you're like extra paranoid, and it's like, <laughs> and it's like not only are you like paranoid for the fact that it's like you're traveling with stuff that you're like you like you you have value in it, and it's like you want to make it back to wherever it's going or or whatever you know whatever you you, you know you put time into getting it there. So, and then you see like people like like I had like that I had this I had this slab, and like 
a whole bunch of other books, like my ex, Giant Size X-Men 1, like all this stuff like shoved in, a, in like this backpack. And like I had it like put it up in the over the over carry part. And then like I see this like lady just taking her suitcase and just huh, huh, I'm like, ah, just stop. You know, and, and, and you're just like, you know, you're you're, like my comics are up there. Yeah, it's like you're freaking out. So it's like, yeah, traveling with stuff is weird. So it's like, okay. And then like so on the way back, I travel this is another DC grail for me. And uh I blame Thanatos, and this is the reason why I bought this book. Uh, it's Thanatos, it's a lantern book, huh? Thanatos always talks about lantern. I, I even sent him. I drew him a picture of a lantern and sent it to him. He has it somewhere uh, in his house somewhere, but he still has it. He told me, and uh, but like I told him, I was like, "You're like basically like like see like right now you can kind of see like there's like." the crazy green lantern right there where he's got all the rings. And then I got the first appearance of Carl Rainer right there. And uh, this is actually uh, green lantern number one. And I bought that at, at C2E2 at the last, on the last day. And they're not lying. Wait till the last day. Cause you'll get the best deals. Just wait. But if you're going to buy something crazy, wait till the last day. Cause they're, That's they're ready. Gorgeous. They're ready to sell. And it's like, so this is like, uh, like, the clown, I don't know. Something about the clown on there makes it kind of cool looking, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was like another. I, I I like DC, man. I like DC and I like Marvel. Like as you can tell, like I said, <laughs> I, have, I have I have educated my kids on both. My kids are well versed in comic book knowledge. If somebody asks my kids something, they will stupefy them with their knowledge, and they will feel just like like underwhelmed like like i can't believe that this person talked to me this way in such a way that and he's only like 17. <laughs> <laughs> it was like they, 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 they uh comics. they they are yes they are they they uh watch uh stuff that i don't even like like i'll walk in and i'll you know like watching youtube and stuff like that i'll be like what's this and they'll be like Deep in the deep in the comic web, <laughs> they'll just be like, "We don't know. We just watching it." <laughs> so, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people. So, you, you were talking about like horror stories with like Chicago and handling books and traveling with books. Yeah. Uh, so, something that we did that I didn't know about until later on. Uh, the entire like first two days there at the house for comic core and everything that big house we we're staying in mm -hmm. uh they forgot to lock the front door what it's a so, so like like we had all this equipment there like we all had like laptops and like cameras and lighting and like all these books like i had an entire like short box of all these books that i was hoping to get signed and like all this nonsense and then i was like you didn't even lock the door. <laughs> you didn't even lock the door. No one was there. Thankfully, no one to our knowledge came in. Nothing was missing, you know, but it's just like this house had next to no blinds, no curtains. Wow. <laughs> Anyone just like looks in and sees like on the, you know, lower levels of the house that no one's there. They might try to like, I don't know, try the handle. <laughs> But thankfully, nothing like that actually happened. So I was very happy about that. Uh, it was it was crazy. It was a lot of fun, but it was crazy. Is so uh, you showed off your lantern, uh, your lantern grail that you got because of Thanatos. Um, I I myself uh, was very envious of a book that uh, that Thanatos showed off. Like this was. Years ago, when I was first like introduced to Thanatos' his channel and everything. On, hold on one second before you show it. Okay. Now okay. I want to let everybody know none of this is planned. We're just talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, "Hey, you want to come on?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, Kay. I'm sorry. So uh, we all know that I do love my my badass female characters. So here she is. Oh yeah, first star sapphire. And I just I love this cover. 
completely honest. I mean, Star Sapphire going toe to toe against Jordan. It's my that, girl. That is cool. Like you can't script this stuff, people. You can't script this. That is awesome, though. It's got the whole like Nuva ring situation that like some CGC slabs have, but I'm okay with it. I yeah, still love it. Nuva rings don't bother me, and it's like I, I don't even like. I don't know what the hell they are, but like, like, I know so many people like freak out if they see them on their slabs, and I was like, yeah, but did it hurt your book? And then they say no. I was like, well, you know, my my book's not gonna get attacked by anything, so I'm good. Exactly. I just rather keep it like all keep it all nice and I got a really good deal on that book too, so I was really happy. Star Sapphire. That is a cool book though. So uh you want to know an indie book that if you're not reading or if you haven't read, you should read because it's no longer coming out. Oh. Uh, so this actually made me a fan of James Stowe and his work. If you've ever checked out any of his artwork, any of his books, which this is the first James Stowe property I ever looked into. And uh, it's I got the full trade of it. I read through all of it in a day. I loved it. And uh, Mark actually surprised me with this like months after the fact. And I love it. So Orc Stain. This is uh, issue one. So basically uh, where Orc Stain came out, uh, James Stowe was having a conversation with the story goes, James Stowe was having a conversation with a friend of his and they were arguing about Lord of the Rings and about the orcs and whether or not the orcs were evil or uh, James Stowe took it as they were just really stupid. They didn't know any better. They weren't evil. They were just really, really simple minded. So uh, he created Orc Stain and uh, this character right here, you see on the front cover, um, this is one eye. This book is crazy. The art is just spectacular and so gritty. Like you see the the back cover right there. Sorry if it's a little shiny because of the slab. But uh, all of the art is like that. Um, just I, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but their form <laughs> of currency is very interesting. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very interesting. Um, uh, it's. I, I wish that he would do another trade of this because there's only one trade of this out. It's it's an image. He just never came back to it, unfortunately, which is kind of heartbreaking. But um, it, it made me it made me a fan of James Stowe's work. And whenever I see he's on a title or that he's doing like a cover, even if I haven't seen the cover, I you know automatically. Like buy, own. add it, add it to my cart. I don't even need to see an image. It's James Stowe. I know I'm gonna like it. Uh, he just recently did a variant cover for Calamity Kate, which I am reading right now, and that cover was spectacular. So, you know, James Stowe, <laughs> definitely check him out if you if you aren't already. He also did uh, Aliens Dead Orbit and a bunch of Godzilla stuff too. Well, I'll have to look at that orc stain then, because like I'm always one to read obscure weird stuff, and I love weird characters. Like, I, I don't want to ruin anything weird. for you, but you're gonna read through it the first time, be like, "What in the world does she have me reading?" Just <laughs> read through the entire thing. It's really weird, but you're gonna love it by the end of it. See, the camera is gonna be like, "All right, it's I'll read orc stain." <laughs> super and, weird. Oh, I'm going to read Orkstead, and you have to read God Loves, Man Kills. You have to read that, and I'm going to okay. read Orkstead. And then we have, to, <laughs> we have to meet back up and be like, okay. <laughs> read, You've heard it here, stuff. folks. You You're heard it here. Do, we're going to do reverse reviews. I will read his book. He will read my book. It's set in stone. It's going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> we I, set it I, on I, video. It, it is on my hunt list. And I will find this book. I will find <laughs> Orc Stain. I don't care where, how it will be found. And, 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 and if Cat Rand can't find a guy loves man kills, I'll send her mine so she can read it. But you guys send it back. <laughs> 
I'll send it back. <laughs> I'm not going to take your book. <laughs> and uh, another uh, another story, Grail, that I love, and uh, it's a it's a Marvel it's a Marvel story, but uh, it's one that I like, and it's always one that I enjoy. Which uh, is uh, Days of Future Past. Yes. And I love that story. I love the yes. cover. Just love everything about it. Like, I mean, even when they did the movie, like, I know it was supposed to be, like, you know, a different person go back or whatever, but, like, it was just, like, it made more sense for Hugh Jackman to do it because it made more sense. And, uh, because Wolverine would still be young at that time anyway, so whatever. It was just made it logical, but it was just one of those movies where, like, I just can't wait to see what they're going to do with the property now that you know, it's back in the in the, the house of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be fun to see what they do. And this is the other cover. This is signed by Claremont. This is the uh, issue where everybody gets yeah. pretty much done in. But yeah. They get ended. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I didn't understand like how like they just did Wolverine in though like that. I was just like, that's it? I was like, he just got snuffed out like that. I was like Wolverine took out Sentinels left and right all day long. <laughs> but so uh, you know, I, I, I get a lot of flack for not reading a lot of Marvel, but one Marvel uh, mini series that I thoroughly enjoyed the first read through. I, I need to go back to this. I haven't reread this in quite some time. But uh, Spider-Man Red Sonia. And it's got one of my favorite Red Sonia and one of my favorite Spider-Man covers of all time, which is this one. Is that Sylvester? Who did, is that Sylvester or is that Michael Turner? Uh, that's Turner. But that's gorgeous. And the entire book throughout is gorgeous. And it's craziness. And it's everything you'd expect it to be. With uh, with Red Sonia and Spider Man teaming up together, it, <laughs> it it is that crazy throughout, and it's just, I mean, it's it's him trying to convince her not to like stab random people, <laughs> and he's like he's like no no that's that's not the way we do things here. <laughs> that is gonna be good. I see. Look, yeah, it's, like see, it's that's good. Why that's it's why good. I love this show because you come across things that you might not know or see that are grails for other people that you might look into and become something interesting that you might look into yourself and want for your list or, or your grail list or whatever. So yeah, I'm interested in that orc stain and I'm interested in that book now too. Kat Ren, you're going to make my wife upset because I'm spending <laughs> more money. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I make Mark disappointed all the time when he sees their spots. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever there's there's just like a stack of a few comics sitting somewhere, he's like, "Are those new?" I'm like, "Oh no, no, I was just I was just straightening books." <laughs> exactly. It's fine. It's fine. It's like they're, they're, they're not new. Or he's like, "Oh, is, is that the new?" Uh, no, 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 I've had this for years. It's, it's old. Like I'm it's really to, old. <laughs> I'm about to start thinking <laughs> the mailman and like, have you, have like, yo, just call me on this burner phone here and, and drop the packages off on the side of the house and let just, me know when you drop them off so my wife will see. <laughs> just, just constantly tell her that you're rearranging your collection. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, I have It'll work a like, few times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's like, she told me the other day, she was like, she was like, if we ever like decide to start a fire, like she said, like your whole collection would be good. Cause like my fireplace is like right here. And like my whole like like it's just like a stack of slabs right here. And then like like books, some other books, uh long boxes all over here and stuff. It it's she's tried to infiltrate my man cave and she's tried to get it back and turn it back into what she wants to turn it into and I keep fighting and bringing in more man cave stuff and me and my boys <laughs> we keep fighting and 
keep trying to, like, she's threatening to take out my sound bar because she's like, it's too She's loud. outnumbered. <laughs> yeah, it's too many guys. So we, 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 we're holding it down in here. But she's, she's made a, a, a frontal assault a few times to, to try to take the man cave out. But <laughs> I, I, so I'm just like, there's too many. She's just like, there's too many books. There's just slabs coming in left and right. When your wife starts talking about slabs, you know you collect too much. <laughs> Probably. This slab over here. <laughs> slab here. Slab. <laughs> I, I think when Mark was looking at something and I asked him, just what, what, what was he doing? He's like, I'm looking for spine ticks. That's when I knew. I was like, oh, I have a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> I have a keeper, folks. Oh, uh, so you know my, you've heard, have you heard my, 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 me and my wife's rule, or the the rule I told my wife, which she actually turned around and used on me. The rule. Yeah. That, the rule that is, I have is... Is it about your purchases? Yeah, yeah, the purchase rule. The purchase okay. Rule, all right, my purchase rule is if it's under $300, I don't have to talk to you. And so she was like, oh, so if it's under $300, you don't have to talk to me. I was like, yeah, I don't have to talk to you. But if it's like $350, $325, $300 oh, you know, like and a penny, I'm going to call you and let you know, like, hey, can I do this? Or, you know, and she was like, okay. So <laughs> this sounds dangerous already. So, so I left it at that, like you know, God put his foot down or whatever, you know, he gets, you know, I think I'm the man in the house or whatever, don't said my piece. And so like gradually like stuff, she starts ordering stuff, and then I'm like, you know, I start noticing, I'm like, you know, hey, what do you what do you get? Where, where'd this come from? What what's this? And she's like, oh, oh. What are you doing with new shoes? What's going on here? And she's like, it's under $300, baby. <laughs> I love your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to talk to you, so don't ask me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it works both ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like I come home and there's a new drone or a new camera. <laughs> like, oh, um, so what's this? Yeah, he bought he bought a, a 360 camera when they were coming out, and um, I, I asked him what we possibly need that for, and he's like, "Oh, for the channel." I was like, "When are we gonna do a 360 vlog on the channel? We've done like two on the channel of me hiking in 360. <laughs> we have a camera. He loves it. Uh, mostly, he just uses it to walk around and do crazy stuff, but uh, we have one." <laughs> I, I can't really talk because I bought uh, I bought one of my grails at the same time. So, I mean, what am I going to do at that point? <laughs> That's how I am. My wife's like, every time I'm like, I'm like, oh, she's like, I thought that was your last grail. I was like, that was the last grail before the last grail. See, this yeah, is the real last grail. always have another grail coming yeah. up. So. That's what I always tell her. I was like, there, it, it's, you think it's over, but it's not really over. See, and, that, and that's why, like, when uh, I love Thanatos, and he said he got his his grail, or he's done, and, and JD even told me he was done. Good luck with that. I was like, always something. <laughs> you think you're done, but like, because like, all right, because Captain America, like, I got my Golden Age cap. I was on the hunt for that. I got that. I have the Silver Age first appearance. And I have like, you know, like I have like I have like everything. If you're a cap fan, I have it. And it's like I still look for cap stuff though. So how am I, you know, like I still feel like it's not done. And uh Captain Marvel, I have all the, the first appearance, I have the, you know, and I still collect Captain Marvel stuff because I feel like I'm not done. You know, it's like when I, and my collecting is too weird to be like I'm done because it's like I like indie stuff, and I need, and it's like, like, like I'm gonna go buy Orkstein for just because, because I, <laughs> I want to read it now, and it's like that, that, that is the 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 plus and minus, the pros and cons of collecting, the fun and the downs, but it's always fun to me because it's like if if you enjoyed it, then I'm gonna try it, and I'm probably gonna enjoy it, and it's like that's what makes this community great is because. 
We all rub off on each other. I need to quit hanging out with Huda and and and, and C. Water and Chad MF90 because. I keep looking at Ninja Turtle books and yes. Ninja Turtles. Uh, did you see the new Ninja Turtle uh, Batman uh, cartoon? Yeah. What is up with all the violence? What is up with all the blood? I was like, is this Ninja Turtles? I was like, and it, it, I liked it though. It was good. It was a good. It was a good movie. But it did was you uh, did you read the um, the new uh, the new crossover? Batman oh. TMT3 one no, that just came out. I didn't, back. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Was it good? What you you need to go back and get it because it's it's okay. If you like amalgamation characters where like they're fusing people together, yeah. I mean all the turtles are fused together with the robins, basically, is the best way to put it. Ooh. Raphael, Raphael is Red Hood. I oh. didn't even know that I needed that in my life. But I am so thankful that it exists. <laughs> so I did right. not know that I needed that. Like, <laughs> I if you told me before, like I would have been like, oh well, that's some weird fan fiction stuff. But then it's like you read the first issue of it, and I'm hoping the rest of it's just as good. But like the first issue of it, I'm like, yeah, I needed that. I needed that. And like Nightwing is Leo. It's like that makes total sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Donnie is um, is Tem, and the only one that kind of didn't make sense to me, and that's just because they're two completely polar opposite characters in my mind. But they needed to have them together at the end. That's uh, Damien is Mikey. That's yeah, that one character yeah. that that didn't make any sense to me. But I mean, like that was the only real like failure in my eyes. However, uh, Splinter is Alfred. And he actually has like a little bow tie and everything. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, we needed that. <laughs> that is hilarious. I'm gonna have to see that then. I'm gonna have to go get it and check it out. Cause like, I, I don't know, like that's like, but like I tried, like, you know, like it's like I'm looking at Ninja Turtle stuff and it's like I try to stay away from that, but it's like, and it's like, ah, but it's like I know I'm gonna end up doing it too. So. Yes, yeah, dangerous. Red there's, there's a lot of keys in that. Yes, cat ready. You talking to me about like getting some? <laughs> I I don't have them. I've really come close to pulling the trigger on a few of them before. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I I really want that first appearance of April O'Neil. Oh yeah. That that was one of my heroes growing up in the the Turtles movies. Oh. I mean, she she was such an amazing character to look up to, and it's like I've I've almost done it a few times. I, I've held back. Uh, I, I feel like I need to fill out a few more of my bat family, maybe beforehand, and then maybe go back. Maybe if they cool off a little bit, they're not cooling off right now. Oh no, no. Now, now it's very very pricey. Yeah, anything like bat. Family crazy, just like, but it's just a yeah. It's just a, I don't know if they, it, did they cast that kid or is he not cast? What is, what's going on? Did we, the Robert Pattinson Our sparkly kid. Batman. Yeah, that's what I kept. My, sparkly my, Batman. Um, I was so upset. He was just like, I, I thought it was a late, a really late April Fool's prank mm -hmm. when I first saw it. And I was like, no, there's there's no possible way that's true. And then I saw it on more news medias and I was just like, someone is having a real laugh at all of the news outlets right now. And then people started talking about it and then it was confirmed by sources that I actually respected. And I was like, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people saying that, like, oh, you know, he's killing it in the indies and this and that. And, you know, that might be true. You can be an amazing actor and then still not be good for a role. Here's my issue with Robert Pattinson. Physically, he's going to need to go through quite a transformation in order to be any of the Bat family members. These are not, like, supercharged, powerful beings. These are fighters, these yeah. are highly trained, Peak very intelligent, you know, they're basically Olympic level gymnasts, they're, technic they're tacticians, they're ninjas, you name it, they can basically accomplish it. 
And I don't think that when I see Robert Pattinson, I'm sorry, the guy, he's scrawny. I just remember the story of him needing surgery after he threw out his back after lifting, what, what is her name? Kristen Stewart, who plays Bella. <laughs> he needed surgery from a scene where he lifted her. The girl's like 80 pounds soaking wet and you threw out your back? I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not that big of, yeah, really? of, of a female, but like I can lift I can lift someone who's 80 pounds no problem. I mean, come on now. Come yeah. on now. You're supposed to tell me that this guy in any iteration of any Bat family member is supposed to be believable. But then I heard like they were petitioning to get the girl, the Kristen Stewart chick, to be the female lead. You know? Oh God, no! Yeah, I heard. I heard that like the, like the fans or whatever from the Twilight or whatever trying to get that to happen. So if he gets the lead as Batman, and I was like, the, man. The only way that would work is if they got the people who did like scary movie and like vampire suck and like all these parodies style like style films. And they did a parody of Batman. I could see that being amazing, <laughs> but it has to be a complete joke because if they're oh, trying to take it serious at all, I'm telling you right now, that will win every Razzie Award of the year, one hundred percent. So, like, are they trying to do a like? Are they trying to do like a, a origin story again? Or, like, we don't need one of those. I'm like, like I've. I've heard, I know the rumor right now is that he's going to be like Batman Beyond. He's going to be Terry McGinnis, which possible, possible, but I still like you're, you're, you're going to need, explain. you're going to need to put him through so much training yeah. in order to get him there. And I, I can't see him committing to that, to be honest. I mean, I think of like, I know they're talking about Christian Bale right now. Bear Island Comics is talking about Christian Bale and the machinist. He lost that weight to get to that size, to be to be that size in the machinist. And then him packing on the muscle. I mean, he is known for packing on crazy amounts of weight and then losing crazy amounts of weight. But that's the kind of actor he is. Where Robert Pattinson, we've never seen him sort of like that we've never seen him commit that fully physically to a role before not saying that he can't i mean anything is possible uh you know it's it's possible that you know we we could both be a uh, bit by mutated spiders and <laughs> develop superpowers uh i saw a spider at work and I thought I might get some superpowers from it. It didn't happen, unfortunately. But anything's possible. Anything's possible. I uh, you don't have to bulk up and stuff, man. Like the only role that I've seen so far where like you didn't have to bulk up for the role was uh, Thor. <laughs> just bulk up the other way. <laughs> just... Oh, is that guy? Yeah, he's gonna have to actually. Yeah, he'll have to. He'll have to work out and stuff because like. There's no way he could just be that, you know, that little and be the dude or whatever. That's like when they did, uh, was it the the gal the gal got chick for Wonder Woman? I I was thankfully wrong with that one because I didn't think that was going to be good at all. I I was not happy when she was cast because the only thing I'd seen her in before was like the Fast and the Furious movies and yeah. everything. But she showed a lot of range in Wonder Woman, and I she has proved me wrong 100%. And I'm hoping that Robert Pattinson proves me wrong 100%. I would love to see another epic Batman on screen. Uh, I'm just I'm not holding out a lot of hope right now for it. <laughs> I mean, we could we could both be wrong. He could be amazing. Yeah, because everybody was wrong about Heath Ledger because we I remember. I remember when they said it, I was like, the guy from Nice Town? <laughs> well, I always think of him from like 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, yeah, that too. Because like, that's, that's my chick flick go to. <laughs> so, um, I, I was, I was, I, I was going to watch it. <laughs> I went back to the theater to see that by a chick. And <laughs> 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 it, 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 it was, it was sad. It was like, when you you know when you're not with that person anymore and you have those memories because you go to do stuff like that and it's like it's like I never watched that movie like Showgirls I had to watch 
I had to watch Showgirls one time. And, and I remember the chick because I had to watch the movie. Because it's those things you do because you are with that person. And it's like. That's what uh, they want to do. Like, yeah, that's what they want to do. Like, uh, my wife, like, we watched uh, Valentine's Day. And she fell asleep. And uh, it's not like, what is it, Valentine's Day? Which one has Ben Affleck in it? Is it Valentine's Day or is it uh, I, he's just not that into you? I actually don't watch because I, I know there's I know there's a Valentine's Day and then there's like a New Year's Day or something. I, have I, I haven't these. seen either one. I'm tortured in life and I have to watch <laughs> these because my wife likes these movies. And I have, so that's the, the compromise. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> like one of those movies has like Ben Affleck in it, but she was like making me watch it and she falls asleep. And I find myself watching the movie and I'm like, oh, that was rather interesting and a good movie. And she's just like, oh, you watched it? And I was like, oh, you fell asleep? And I'm like, I could have been watching that like, again. Yeah, yeah, I could have <laughs> watched something else, you know, I could have been And it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, but you, you know you don't watch. I don't watch it. Like it's like one time and I'm done. I'm like good. Like some movies you watch one time and you're done. Some movies you know you go back and watch again and again because it's like it's good. I think I've seen Beer Fest like thirty times. <laughs> <laughs> so you got anything coming up that you're doing on your channel or on? So, uh, Comic Core, uh, we've got the Friday night live stream, uh, as per usual, off the rails, a uh, bunch of craziness in there. Um, on my channel, I just dropped uh, reviews for both of the brand new Kevin Eastman books that just came out, Drawing Blood in the Radically Rearranged Ronin Ragdolls. I always have to think when I say that title, because it's really long and it's all ours. It's like, uh, isn't that the so one with like the story, like inside the story of that writer or whatever? Yes, like they they tie in like yeah, completely. Yeah. Like you need to read. Well, you don't need to read, but I was I would suggest reading Drawing Blood before the Rur book. I'm just calling. It, I'm gonna call it Rur from now on because it's four R's. <laughs> but. Uh, I've got that uh, DC fans. We've got another season of that starting and I'm returning as the Wonder Woman reviewer for that. Ah. So I'm very happy about that. Um, I don't know. A lot of craziness, a lot of fun things. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. And hopefully we'll have Mark along with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know um, Chad and I were just talking we might do a live stream if if everything works out with his schedule on my channel this weekend, mm -hmm. and we might be playing a uh, Mary Fuck uh, Face Off with, but it's all gonna be um, comic book characters. So um, just a stack of different uh, comic book characters, just at random. So it's like Marvel, DC, and Image, and just whoever thrown in there. And I made up those cards like two months ago and trying to get Mark to do it with me and he wasn't interested in playing that game. So <laughs> Chad's going to play apparently. <laughs> oh, that's going to be cool. Man. <laughs> so Chad has no idea what's on those cards and I don't remember what I put on those cards. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, we'll find out. We'll <laughs> and Limeline said, I think Kat Ren is beautiful, isn't she? Yes, Kat Rain oh, is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So that is the ray of sunshine of the comic core and the community. Oh, thank you. So, guys, this has been an episode of What's Your Grails. I had a blast with Kat Rain figures. I did too. <laughs> came on and like I said, this is a live impromptu show. Like, there's no script. So anytime you see stuff like that happen where we're talking about stuff, it's it, like the books coincide. It's not scripted. We just talk about it. It just happens. So you guys have a nice one, man. And uh, I'll see you next week when I am the guest on my own mm -hmm. show. And uh, Jeffrey is hosting. <laughs> What's your grails? <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see how that works. You guys have a good one and uh, 
See you next time.